So why do you think they did that? One of the one of the theories out there, Tesla has recognized that the that they have a little too much capacity built out for what the market demands from an EV for the next two to three years. And then moving up this cheaper vehicle platform wasn't necessarily a, oh, uh, we're going to do this because we want to. It's like we want to we should need to do this because otherwise we're going to have idle capacity. It, it was actually brought on by that variable instead of them thinking they had enough runway to get to the Gen 3 car. How do you guys how do you guys read that? Maybe this is me wanting drama in my own head. So in my imagination, the way this movie went was Elon was like, you know what, guys? No, we are not going to do on the same line. We're just going to go forward with the road with taxi. That's what we're going to do. Because I imagine that trying to do two, two vehicles, one line with the exact same process be, started slowing down the robo taxi. I, I think that might've been what would happen. And I could see Elon saying, we're wasting too much on this. FSD is progressing fast. We are behind on developing the robo taxi. We need to move faster now. We can still do this, what you're talking about. I'm sure part of what you're saying is is also accurate, Farzad. But I can see them saying like, look, we're gonna have giga castings regardless. We already have these lines set up. Can we get more efficiency out of these? You know, we already have these machines, these process we did to stamp out the doors and to do this and that for, for the unbox. We don't need to have to hold the unbox today. Iterate, change the lines we have now. Let's get done with this. Skunk Works team, you got six months to figure this out. And a uh, team who's doing the unbox, process forget about the other car focus on the robo taxi you're slowing down you have six months now i think it probably was more along something like that yeah i think that there's some validity to that and really i mean the way that i would summarize it is just capex efficiency that in order like we don't want to have to spend you know billions and billions and billions of dollars down on our war chest in order to build out all this capacity for the robo taxi when we can just modify what we have and get more like be more resource efficient in this transition and in the process like jeff Letts has been saying really give the supply chain a chance to ramp up to the types of volumes with a whole lot of parts that are new that you know that's been one of the going back to what we were talking about earlier one of the things that i was just curious how the heck is tesla going to ramp up you know we're putting 48 volt architecture and steer by wire in the cyber truck if we're only at 250,000 units worth of cyber truck delivery run rate when they're trying to bring up this next generation vehicle and the next generation vehicle platform is supposed to sell 4 million plus units a year um you know there's a big gap between 250,000 units a year and 4 million units a year, how do you ramp that supply chain smoothly in a reasonable amount of time? Like that seems like a really difficult challenge, like probably as difficult, if not more difficult than a lot of the engineering challenges inside the factory. And so I think this plan really de-risks the supply chain end of things, which people don't think about and is so complex. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if one of the things that to add to what Nick was saying that slowed things down is they started making all these plans for Mexico and there were parts of the supply chain that they were trying to secure for ramping up this unbox process in Mexico. And they just kept hitting walls, be like talking to this supplier, that supplier and this supplier for and my guess is it's for some of the brand new parts that have never been used before. And they're just like, no, there's no way that we can achieve those types of volumes on the time frame that you want us to hit them. And, you know, if, if that's the case, well, then there's no point in getting the factory started and getting it built because you absolutely do not want to build that machine and then have it starved for parts and just burning cash like nobody's business. And so I, I think that it it all just boils down to CapEx efficiency and all of the things that they discovered when they're trying to figure out how do we scale from 3 million, you know, two, we'll say 2 million units a year this year to seven or 8 million units a year, several years from now. 
no, like there's just like the, the plans that we had to move from here to there weren't possible. And so we had to just change, like we're still going to get to roughly that same endpoint in roughly the same amount of time, but we're going to have to change how we're getting there. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a very interesting point. I think, I think what's additionally interesting about gen three platform, like the, the ground up way they're going to do it is that if, if I remember correctly on the deck and on the call, um, Tesla said that the robo taxi, what the cyber cab, whatever the hell this thing is, that's still going on this gen three, but for you to have a launch of robo taxi in the next 12 months, you don't need that many units. So like that line could also be running at a, at a low quantity to start and making these cyber cab robo taxis that might make 50 to $80,000 per year of revenue because they're, you know, they're doing ride hailing and all of a sudden you could have a very inefficient line start making money right away too. So like it, that's one of the things that breaks the equation as well. So you don't necessarily need the usual supply chain efficiency and manufacturing efficiency you need for a line to make money as long as you're, you're actually generating revenue. So it's like the first year or two could be like Waymo, but you actually have a Waymo that at least breaks even. And then as the technology ramps up, you could start turning a lot more profit as you, as you get more units out there and you make the line more efficient. It is, okay, so do you guys think this cheaper car on the hybrid line, is that still a $25,000 compact or do you think it's something else? I think it's, it's cheaper and I think it, probably compact i don't know if it's quite twenty five thousand dollars i would probably twenty five thousand dollars after federal tax incentives um one of the things that they said on the call that when you think about it is actually very exciting is that you know they said they have all of these battery supplies they didn't end up needing to ramp up 4680 because they have all of this cell supply that's available to them. Think about one of the advantages that they have if they did ramp up 4680 that they don't have otherwise, unless that other cell supply is in the US. And that is, you know, they're manufacturing these cells in the US. They have access to not only, you know, the the IRA $7,500 off the purchase price for qualifying vehicles, but then all of the credits that they make on uh you know on the materials and the battery manufacturing side of that so like that's that's extru that's a lot of money on the table if they just go crazy with 4680 manufacturing the fact that they're not going crazy with 4680 manufacturing tells me there's some other factors that they're weighing in the decision and what i'm wondering is if they're looking at a whole bunch of us cell supply coming online that was supposed to go to GM and Ford and all these other companies. And they're actually going to have IRA eligible batteries for these cars that they're going to be coming out with next year. And so we could see, you know, a, say a two door version of the model three in a hatchback. Like I can't stop thinking about, the two door hatchback version of the model three performance with IRA compatible batteries Forget that it. that thing would be nuts. It would be insane. You know, they're, they're already saying that the model three performance is just a complete smackdown on the BMW M three. Now take that and shrink it by several hundred pounds and put it on a, a slightly shorter wheelbase. Cause you could, you know, if you do structural castings front and rear for that, you can just shrink the battery pack that goes in between those two castings a little bit. You're going to have to, you know, have whole new body side outers, um, for the sides, but uh, that's something that should be relatively easy to do. And they can still use essentially the same front, do a modification on like a model Y rear for the hatch. Um, and it, it would be an incredible vehicle. And so then you start your ramp with that and then you move down to a more affordable version. That's not a performance. Um, and, and like that would set the performance automotive world on fire. Like you're, you're talking about something that would destroy an old Subaru WRX all day long, every day. And at a price point that you know would come in well under 
probably the the Civic Type R. Yeah, so I, I want to go right into that, but I, I like the conversation with the batteries. I, it, the way I look at it with the batteries, it's it's almost, let me say this out loud, I don't know if this analogy works, but it's like if you buy a house, you could buy it in cash if you have the money, and then your capital is all locked up and you used your cash. Or you could take a mortgage out once upon a time rates were good and use your cash as a you know as a uh, safety blanket to invest in you, you have more optionality i feel like with the batteries right now tesla would be foolish not to be soaking up everything out there on the market why would i use my 4680s right now that's always my backup plan i got down the back burner that's going to be there ready to go when i need it in the meantime let me let me eat up everything that's out there right now at a more cost effective and I can instead take that CapEx, put it to something else right now. And we can still continue to do what we're doing, but there's no need to go balls to walls on that right now. When we have all this other supply out there, like that's, that seems like a no brainer to me. Um, Especially but, since it stimulates like the growth of that overall supply chain and ecosystem yeah. overall right now that, you know, the more that other people develop battery supply for the next, two, three, four, five years, the more there will be total. Yeah. And you're killing the competition, which at this point I'm all for it. Um, I know everyone's like, oh, we need everybody to win and all that. Eh, I'm not that person. I want them all to go by the wayside. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, good. I'm, I'm getting on that boat, honestly, personally. I used to be right. much more like a, I want everybody to win, but like like Ford's Ford's latest earnings, have you, have you seen them? Yeah, of course. They, their revenue is down 84% because they had to take a giant uh, cut on their pricing and they shipped less. And I think they shipped 10,000 EVs to dealers because their lots are so overrun. They had $1.3 million of, uh, I think, cost, billion dollars of cost, and they made $100 million in revenue. It's we, a joke. We just, it's a joke. We got to stop this, this crap. I mean, I don't, know, I don't want to get into the government, but just this wasteful spending and incentivizing lack of hard work or lack of moving fast or lack of innovation we just got to stop that in general but as far as what this is going to look like i'm we're going to know on a8 i mean elon that's how i heard the call he was saying you'll find out on 8 8 um on what's going to look like so i'm kind of hoping that we see a certain body exterior that i mean they're all the same underpinnings, right? Same way they're going to do all these. But I hope Europe has its own version. I hope China has its own version. I hope the States have has its own version. And there's no reason not to, right? Because to Han's point, all you're changing is the outers, right? So if you can do that, but all the underpinnings are the same, I mean, that'd be pretty awesome. But I also don't know what I don't know. So I'm trivializing. The most interesting part of this, though, of leveraging the existing lines and, and just not having to dump all this CapEx and stuff is that Model Y and 3 will benefit from this, too. Right? Because you you are you are pushing this, the, the metal through the same lines that your most profitable cars are going through right now. And now you're adding a, a, a different thing that's not going to bring the total fixed like the fixed cost is going to be spread over 3 million plus units instead of 1.8 2 million units so then your model y and 3 costs will come down and then you have the fsc layer on top of it once you know that as it gets better and the unsupervised version comes out so that's more and more profit i still feel like tesla could very much come out with a twenty five thousand dollar compact that maybe doesn't cost twenty thousand to make maybe cost twenty five or twenty eight thousand dollars to make but they'll still make a profit on a $25,000 car because they'll be able to upsell FSD. I, I, and, and I think that's maybe one of the gambles that they're taking here is that they're like, okay, we know FSD is here. We know that if we do the hybrid uh, existing line and the Gen 3 line, we're not going to get the cost down to where we want it to be. But if FSD is live and people sign up for it, the cost that we miss out on will recoup in a year or two after people sign up for the software. And so, and so as they move away from the hybrid line to the Gen 3 line, you sell, still same the same car, but when you shift over to the full Gen 3 line, you bring the cost down, uh, but you keep the price where it's at. So maybe it's, it's almost like a loss leading effort where at, to start, and you know, you come out with a performance model, but you could theoretically come out with an even cheaper model 
and still making money on that because of FST.